If you want to become a data scientist, in this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can get your first data science job in under six months, even if you are starting from zero. And this is not something which is coming from ChatGBT or Medium articles. This is based on my 10 plus years of experience working in the US tech industry for some of the biggest tech giants in the world like Meta, Cisco, and Wells Fargo. So let us start looking at this roadmap. So the promise is that if you act on it, then within six months, you should be able to land your first job as a data scientist. And we will work backwards from the job descriptions themselves. This is one of the best things I learned from the world famous book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And the second habit was always to begin with the end in mind. If we want to get a data science job, then what does a data science job look like? And then what kind of qualification do we need? to qualify for that role. So instead of taking the conventional path of this is where we are standing, and if you have zero knowledge, then what is the next step you can take? Instead of taking that random approach, we are going to begin with the end in mind. And the end here is to land a data science job. And then we'll say, okay, what step can help us get there? And then we'll trace it back all the way to where you currently stand so that we have a very concrete to the point roadmap for us to follow. So this simple difference of starting from where you are and then going into the forward direction and trying different things and seeing what works, what doesn't work. If you take this backward approach of first deciding on where you want to get and then taking a backward approach of what you need to actually attain to get there is much more effective and that's what we're going to explain in this video. And one thing I want to remind you here is that according to Bureau of Labor and Statistics Department in the US, data science job market is expected to grow at a 35% rate in the next 10 years. And this is much, much higher than national average. It is even much higher than other tech jobs. So you do have a tailwind in your favor. And if you're not fully familiar with the word tailwind, it is basically used to explain that is the wind in your favor? For example, if this is a bird and it is trying to fly, then if the wind is coming from its tail, then it will help us go in the positive direction. But if it is a headwind, which is coming from the opposite direction, then it will make it much difficult for this bird to fly. So since data science job market is expected to grow at a much, much faster pace in the future, you do have this tailwind in your favor, which means that getting a job as a data scientist honestly is relatively less difficult than getting a lot of other more competitive jobs, which are not going to increase as much in future. Or in a lot of cases, the jobs are going to shrink in future. And you can very easily find it out as you spend more time on the US Department of Labor and Statistics website and seeing different job growth projections in future. A lot of them are actually negative because they are anticipating that those jobs are going to decrease in future. So in this case, you have in your favor, the data science job market is going to expand load in future. So if you have the right mindset and you can spend some time trying to learn effectively, which we're going to go over in this video, then you have a very good chance of learning a job as a data scientist in the future. Okay, so what do you need to actually learn? Let's define the job ready stack. The biggest mistake you can make while trying to learn data science is start learning 15, 20, tools, languages, skill set. Data science is a very dynamic and a very diverse field, which means that as you look at different job descriptions, what you would see is that there are a lot of different tools, MLflow, Langchain, Langgraph, and there's just a lot of tools which are mentioned. So the worst mistake you can do is you start trying to learn a little bit of all those tools. There's just so much to go through. So what a better approach is you do the 80-20 analysis and see that what is the 20% of the skills which are needed or asked in the 80% of the job requirements. And most likely, what you would see is that these are the fundamental skills. For example, according to a recent analysis, the most asked technical skill for most data science jobs is SQL. And then after that, it's Python. And then after that, it is the machine learning. So you have to learn these things in order, but always do the 80-20 analysis of figuring out what are the 20% of the skills which are asked in the 80% of the job requirements? And within that, for example, if you are looking at SQL, then see that what are the 20% of the commands which can help you solve 80% of the problems. So Pareto principle within data science is your best friend because otherwise you would be spending a lot of time trying to learn so many things. Use the 80-20 principle 
and trying to just learn bare minimum so that you could get to a state that you can create a demonstrable project with your skills. If you need help about what you should be learning from where you should be learning, then in the description below, I have linked a free data science roadmap guide, which you can just download and follow along. But generally, when we talk about foundational skills for data science, they follow this pyramid. First, you have SQL, then you have Python, and then you have machine learning and statistics. The reason SQL takes up the foundation and it is the first time and you should be most of the time especially if you're a beginner is that to be a data scientist you will be dealing with data and sql is the language of data so it will give you an intuition about what kind of databases are there what kind of tables exist how you can join them how you can merge them how you can do different transformations on them so sql is the very basic thing you should try to learn first once you know sql then the second step is to use Python. And within Python, there are different libraries. There's PySpark, there's Pandas, and other ML-related libraries, which you would be needing. So learning Python next is the best thing. And then you can spend some time learning machine learning, theory, statistics, etc. And this is where you should be spending least time as compared to the other two foundations. But once you have these three things and you know them decent enough, then the next thing would be that you start building some projects and actually start getting your hands dirty. And as you build the project, then you would get a chance to become what I call a T-shaped data scientist. So this is what a T-shaped data scientist looks like. These are your foundational skills, which you know a little bit. This could be your SQL, this could be your Python, this could be your ML statistics. So you need to know something about these foundational skills to actually start building the projects. But as you start building a project, that's when you start going deep into one thing which you're trying to build there. And this depth, it can be related to a particular skill. For example, you say that I'm trying to master NLP, I'm trying to master Gen AI, it could be time series analysis. So one particular skill, or it can be a mixture of a particular industry. For example, you're saying that I'm trying to see how we can reduce churn for B2B healthcare companies. Now, that's a very specific niche about a specific industry. And when you start spending time there, then you develop a very demonstrable, knowledgeable experience about one specific thing, which becomes your differentiating factor when you are applying for jobs against hundreds, sometimes thousands of other applicants. But this T-shaped thing comes after once you have spent some time on this foundational pyramid and you know a little bit about SQL, Python, machine learning, statistics, etc. Now to make this game plan a little more concrete and to the point, it basically boils down to this three-step playbook. The first step where you can spend your first two months is that you master the core. And again, this is your SQL, this is your statistics, this is your Python libraries, this is your machine learning, and other little things like Git and PySpark, etc. So once you know enough foundations, then for the next two months, you should be picking sort of a niche where you are going to go deep, and then you're going to build a project portfolio. It could be one project which where you go very deep. That's generally the approach which I recommend. Or it could be two to three projects if you think that there is just not enough depth in the kind of project you're trying to build. But unless you are an absolute beginner, Try to stay away from the toy datasets which are available on Kaggle because they are like very simple. But if you're a very beginner and that's all you can do, that, that's still fine in, in the beginning. But when you're picking a project, one mindset you should have is that what kind of problem a company would pay, actually pay you money to solve for them. And that is the kind of problem which you should be solving with data. Because my definition of data scientists is that we are someone who solve business problems with the help of data. So think that what kind of business problem you can solve with data, which actually have some underlying business impact. And if you could demonstrate that you can solve that kind of problem, of course you can find some companies who have that kind of problem. And when you show them your solution, one, it will help you build a network. Second, they will benefit something from you because you must have learned something there. And most importantly, third, you also get to learn a little bit more about the problem and that's how you can further deepen your T-shaped expertise. The last two months, you would be spending on job hunt and a job hunt is not just mass applying to as many jobs as you can possibly find. It is 
finding your niche and then finding some jobs where you can apply, tailing your resume for that, further working on your portfolio project, which is around that niche, connecting with people who are working in that industry and then get some feedback from them. So the flywheel actually becomes is that you build a project and then you put it in your resume, you can put it in your Git, or you can just create one pager proposal for that document that what are you trying to achieve? What do you think is going to be the outcome or what is the outcome if you have already built the solution? And then you do some networking and which is basically you reach out to different people who are working in the industry, trying to solve the same kind of problem. And you reach out to them with, hey, this is the kind of solution which I've built. Do you have any feedback or suggestion for improvement? A lot of people I think would be very willing to see that what you have made because they will be curious then you can connect with them and show them what you have built and learn from that introduction that what you can further build and what you can further improve and once you get some feedback then you can again go back to your project and further refine and further improve it so if you keep going into this cycle very soon you would have a project you would be very very impressed you would be very very proud of and when you reach out and connect with people and talk about that project that will demonstrate how knowledgeable you are in the skill set which you have acquired and that will open a lot of doors for you which could lead to getting your first data science job just to demonstrate what it looks like in practice there was a student i was mentoring let's call her aisha she was before a marketing manager she had some technical experience she was fluent in python she had built a resume which looks very generic had done some kaggle projects and then when i started mentoring her we discussed that what is one sort of killer project she can make. And we tapped into her prior expertise in marketing and what kind of domain she had expertise and familiarity with. And since it was marketing, and in most marketing, the number one challenge is that how you can reduce churn because that has direct impact on the lifetime value of a customer and direct impact on the business revenue. So we started working on a very deep killer churn project and she went really deep into that she did a cohort analysis of how the churn of different customers is going she did a very deep dive into causal inference to see what are the factors which are impacting the churn and then based on that she created some concrete recommendation on what are the actions business can take to reduce the churn and what is the anticipated churn reduction based on all those factors and then she created one very detailed white paper for that project and also a one page summary document for that and then she started reaching out to people who were working on the similar kind of problem and sharing her solution and getting some feedback that led to her getting four interviews and her first data science job and the reason i think most people are having a really hard time preparing for data science or getting a data science job it mainly boils down to these two reasons one they just start going through different udemy courses different coursera courses and they start collecting those certificates by completing different courses and the second mistake they make is that they start chasing different shiny tools because data science is sort of an evolving field pretty much every month you would see that there is a new tool which comes out Today, you are trying to learn LangChain. The next month, you're trying to learn N8N. And the next month is going to be another tool which you're trying to learn. And the fix for both these problems is the same. You start with a foundation skills of SQL, Python, etc. And always do Pareto analysis of 80-20. That what are the 20% of things which lead to 80% of the impact? And then you start building your portfolio project. Your bias should always be towards active learning. And this is the mental framework I want you to have. When it comes to learning, there are two kinds of learning. One, there is some passive learning, and then there is some active learning where you are hands-on and you're actually trying to build something. And then there is theoretical learning, where you're trying to understand the theory behind something, maybe some machine learning or some statistics concept, etc. And then there is some practical learning. Ideally, you should try to spend as much time as possible in this area, because this is practical active learning where you're developing something you're building something and this is what actually helps you get a job and the thing you should try to stay away from as much possible is this zone which is passive learning some theoretical concepts it could be watching some youtube video about some very technical complexity of a machine learning algorithm there were days when 
in the interviews this kind of skill sets were asked but nowadays when chat gpt can help you answer all these things without problem the actual thing which businesses want is that someone who could help them solve their business problems and for that you have to stay in this area as much possible and then demonstrate it in your resume so this whole video was for a six month action plan just to give you get started a very concrete seven day launch plan looks like this you go on linkedin you search for data scientist position you look for some entry level or junior friendly roles you find five such job posts and then put them into some google doc and then try to analyze that what are the main things they're asking for. Most likely the overlap would be some foundational skills. On technical side, it'll be SQL, Python, machine learning, statistics. And then on non-technical side, it'll be problem solving, leadership, communication, etc. Then your next job is that based on whatever skills you have seen there and based on what your current expertise is, define, come up with one micro project and try to build it. Use as much help as you can from any AI tool like ChatGPT, etc. to help you write code, but do something, create something which you actually think provides some business value and then put it on your LinkedIn, on your resume, create a post on LinkedIn, then reach out to different people which you think are related to that project and then just reach out very politely and very casually, hey, this is what I've built. I think this is useful. Since you are working in this field, can you please provide me some feedback? Try to create simple Loom video, three to five minute video explaining what you've done. Keep your ask very simple to the point and you would be surprised how many people are willing to look at what you've built and then help you with that. And that will give you your first momentum because the momentum loop looks like this. You take some action and it could be a very small piece of action. Then you see some progress. For example, when you create that one page document or some Loom video explaining what you're trying to build and you send it to someone, then you'll see that some people are willing to help and connect with you. And then based on that progress, you get some motivation. And that motivation sort of pulls you to take some more action. And that is what this seven day plan is about. You are not going to build some very intensive portfolio project and you are most likely not get your first job in the first seven days. But we want to start taking some action, see what kind of progress we make based on that, and then get some motivation and then just keep going. And this is what the Japanese concept of Kaizen actually looks like. You make incremental improvement and just keep going and going and going. And very soon you will see that you would be getting the thing you're putting all this effort for, which is your first job offer letter for a data science role. Again, the PDF roadmap on how you can learn the foundational skills is in the description below. It's absolutely free of cost. So please have a look. And if you want to do a follow along of looking at different job descriptions and seeing what are the common things asked there, then please check out this video. It's a 40 minute long video where I've analyzed different job listings for the role of junior data scientist and then try to analyze what are the common things there and how you can prepare for that. The link for that video should be somewhere here. Please check it out. Thank you so much for watching.